Chapter 10. The Puppets Recognize Their Brother Pinocchio When Pinocchio came into the little puppet theater, an incident occurred that almost produced a revolution. The curtain had gone up, and the play had already begun. On the stage, Harlequin and Punch were as usual quarreling with each other, and threatening at every moment to come to blows. All at once Harlequin stopped short, and, turning to the public, pointed with his hand to someone far down in the pit, and exclaimed in a dramatic tone, "'Gods of the firmament! Do I dream, or am I awake? But surely that is Pinocchio!' "'It is indeed Pinocchio!' cried Punch. "'It is indeed himself!' screamed Miss Rose, peeping from behind the scenes." "'It is Pinocchio! It is Pinocchio!' shouted all the puppets in chorus, leaping from all sides onto the stage. "'It is Pinocchio! It is our brother Pinocchio! Long live Pinocchio!' "'Pinocchio, come up here to me!' cried Harlequin, "'and throw yourself into the arms of your wooden brothers.' At this affectionate invitation, Pinocchio made a leap from the end of the pit into the reserved seats. Another leap landed him on the head of the leader of the orchestra, and he then sprang onto the stage. The embraces, the friendly pinches, and the demonstrations of warm brotherly affection that Pinocchio received from the excited crowd of actors and actresses of the puppet dramatic company were beyond description. The sight was doubtless a moving one, but the public in the pit, finding that the play was stopped, became impatient and began to shout, We want the play! Go on with the play! It was all wasted breath. The puppets, instead of continuing the recital, redoubled their noise and outcries, and putting Pinocchio on their shoulders, carried him in triumph before the footlights. At that moment out came the showman. He was very big and so ugly that the sight of him was enough to frighten anyone. His beard was as black as ink and so long that it reached from his chin to the ground. I need only say that he trod upon it when he walked. His mouth was as big as an oven, and his eyes were like two lanterns of red glass with lights burning inside them. He carried a large whip made of snakes and foxes' tails, twisted together, which he cracked constantly. At his unexpected appearance there was a profound silence. No one dared to breathe. A fly might have been heard in the stillness. The poor puppets of both sexes trembled like so many leaves. "'Why have you come to raise a disturbance in my theatre? asked the showman of Pinocchio in a gruff voice of a hobgoblin, suffering from a severe cold in the head. "'Believe me, honored sir, it was not my fault. That is enough. Tonight we will settle our accounts.' As soon as the play was over, the showman went into the kitchen, where a fine lamb being prepared for his supper was turning slowly on the spit in front of the fire. As there was not enough wood to finish roasting and browning it, he called Harlequin and Punch and said to them, "'Bring that puppet here. You will find him hanging on a nail. It seems to me that he is made of very dry wood, and I am sure that if he were thrown on the fire it would make a beautiful blaze for the roast.' At first Harlequin and Punch hesitated, but appalled by a severe glance from their master they obeyed. In a short time they returned to the kitchen carrying poor Pinocchio, who was wriggling like an eel taken out of water and screaming desperately, Papa! Papa, save me! I will not die! I will not die!'